Hello, my friends. Welcome to Quartet. It's so nice to have you with us today. I'm John Peterson from the Arlington Institute, and we get together like this fortnightly. Every couple of weeks, we get together with the four of us to talk about the big, deep issues that are related to this transition to a new world, this amazing kind of a shift that is going on that is unprecedented on this planet, as far as uh, I'm concerned and we're concerned. We, in this case, are uh, three of my friends. Uh, Penny Kelly from uh, Michigan. Hello, Penny. How are you? Hi, John. Hi, Greg. Hi, Kingsley and everybody else out there. And Kingsley Dennis from the UK. How are you, Kingsley? Thank you, John. I'm I'm good, thank you. Uh, Greetings to, to you all and to everyone out there. It's good to be with you. And our friend Greg Braden, who is going to be with us here in Berkeley Springs in just about a month. And we're looking forward to that. Hi, Greg. I'm looking forward to that as well. Hello, Kingsley and Penny and John, everyone out there. I'm I'm looking forward to this conversation today. Yeah, this is going to be a good conversation because we're going to plumb deeply into the whole notion of what in kind of big, broad, conceptual, grand, strategic terms is going on on this planet right now what in the world is driving uh all of these things that we're seeing going on at that that kind of the highest level perhaps uh and uh you'll want to uh stay tuned for that because that will be interesting of course we come here as i mentioned every couple of weeks uh from the arlington institute which uh, we hold forth in our little resort town of Berkeley Springs, which is just down the road from Bar- uh, uh, Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, that is, which is right down the road from uh, Washington and Baltimore. And uh, we always have a, a wonderful time here with our transition talks, which is one of the programs that we have at the Arlington Institute every month. And so, like I say, we're looking forward to having Greg with us. Now it's time for questions. We had one question from... Kathleen Cobalt. Penny, you said that humans are moving from being completely physical to being bodies of light, which is a different kind of material. Well, we could argue about that. Does she think perhaps that our new bodies will be composed of a plasma or a plasma-like substance in this uh, in this skin? Is this akin to transfiguration and also akin to the alchemical transmutation into a golden body. So, Penny, it's all yours. Well, okay. So, first of all, I would say that the the plasma is not, plasma is the basis of matter. And so, to say that we're becoming plasma is kind of, we're, we already are, we already right were back at an earlier stage of development. Um, but if you're thinking of plasma as this kind of a, a kind of a smoke-like wavy thing that doesn't have any form, no, I don't see that. I don't think that's that's that isn't part of the training that I had about the destiny of the human. Okay, we are not becoming plasma, we are becoming a different kind of organic matter. Okay, so um, it is akin or similar to transfiguration. It is a, the alchemical transmutation to a body of light, golden body. Um, when I have been in that state, when I am that body, um, you don't really understand, you don't really think about being a golden body, but you cannot help but see that you are generating a sphere, probably 60 to 70 feet in diameter of golden light that lights everything. And there's this deep awareness that uh, humans mostly live in the dark. When you step into that kind of consciousness, you you don't ever need electricity again. You don't ever need light bulbs. Um, and that is what we are moving toward. The difference between what the humans here on planet Earth are doing and humans, uh, other humanoid beings have done in other places is that they have often given up the, what I'll call the solidity of the human form because it's easier, because it's faster. 
we have our destiny is moving in a different direction and is going to be that we hang on to our physical self, uh, transmute the physical material and become beings of kind of a solidified light. And you could say that we already are that, but we're not very bright um, and we don't give off any light yet. So, yeah, yep, that, that's my, that would be my response as well, is that we already are light. Yep. Everything is light at the most fundamental level, and then everything else, plasma and such, are all derivatives downstream. Anybody else want to have anything to say about that? Uh, Penny, I think you you nailed it with that that last statement, and I think this is what a lot of people, and especially in the new thought, new age community, are missing: that somehow we're leaving our bodies, uh, and they're the whole point of what was shown in the ancient traditions, in the Christian traditions, was that uh, we are keeping this body and allowing a, a, a greater expression. It's a, right. uh, some people say a higher frequency, higher vibration, but that's the, the transfiguration within the body. And that's why it's important to honor the body and to care for the body so that it can do what the body knows how to do. And that is to to take us into uh, a more refined state of uh, it's still physical. It's just not as, as physical as what we have right now, but you can only do that with a body. So that's, that's, that's <laughs> I think the, the, so many people in the new thought movement are saying, man, I just want to get out of here. You know, just, uh, I'm, I've had it with this world. Take, take me into my, my spirit body. And, and they're not dealing with the, the issues that help them, uh, and help them to mature into the acceptance of, of what their body can actually provide for them. Um, yeah, Greg, that's what my mother used to say when she was, when I was just a little kid, I just want to get, I, I want to go to heaven. And I kept saying, mine, mine too. What in the world that's am I going to do? You know, if, you, if I could just add there, John, I mean, add to what Penny is and the extensive answer you've already given. Um, I mean, according to, to quantum biology, of course, we are uh, a body of, of li liquid crystalline and biophotons. And the DNA is, is is emits biophotons, which is why we have a, a you know, a, an in, a kind of communication field. But those biophotons require coherency. When there's a coherency on the body's biophoton field, we have a healthy body and we have a receptive body. But if you damage that coherency through altering the frequency, then you don't have body reception. And that may tie into some of the subject we're going to talk about later in this session. Thank you very much. And thank you, Kathleen, for your comment. And uh, for any of the rest of you who are listening that would have questions or comments, please put them on the website at arlingtoninstitute.org and uh, we'll do our best to get back and make some sense and respond to them as best we can. So uh, we have come to our topic for today. Uh, one of the things that uh, I, as a futurist at least, uh, spend a lot of time doing is trying to look in big, broad terms about what is going on on the planet these days and where it's going. Uh, I, I keep saying, wait a second, there's a co there's an internal consistency to what these uh, kind of different initiatives that you see coming f coming forward. And uh, what you try to do in my business, at least, is to pull the thread through those and try to connect the dots, if you will, and say, hey, you know, are, are these just random kind of events that are showing up? Is it just time, just kind of fashionable uh, or is there a larger kind of agenda? And again, the problem is if you get fixated on one component of this and miss the big sweep of it, you miss where the whole river is going downstream and and uh, uh, and what and what you can do to re respond to the thing. So in the context of that, it's uh, very interesting to get exposed, as I have in the last uh, couple of weeks, to... Uh, uh, a whole new set of ideas about what the big overarching and you know, objective of all of this is. And it uh, comes uh, essentially from multiple kind of sources. But Rudolf Steiner is one, of course, that has talked about these times back 100 years ago when he was running around uh, Europe. Uh, Steiner, the great mystic in uh, medium and such, 
uh, was able to uh, kind of look into the future, and he talked very specifically about uh, uh, the kind of large, kind of spiritual kind of object uh, of uh, operations that were going on, other dimensional levels. He talked about Araman and other kind of forces that were in play, a major forces that were in play that were kind of off planet and on planet, if you will, that they transcended just humanity and that were uh, driving and influencing this whole evolutionary push uh, for their specific ends to their particular ends. And uh, he talked about the fact and anticipated long before anybody knew anything about digital digital things or binary stuff or computers or anything like that. But he talked about uh, the fact that there was a time that was coming downstream when uh, essentially there was going to be a giant push toward uh, machines and put it, making us integral parts of machines and uh, essentially threatening our humanity and the essence of who we are. And so this move towards digitization uh, has this kind of very fundamental kind of uh, thread that goes into the through the middle of this. And the uh, fact of the matter is that uh, it is the digitization, you could make an argument, you could argue, it is the dis digitization of our kind of experience of reality that in fact is making it, opening it up and opening us up to being uh, controlled, manipulated, engineered from the outside. And so the question kind of is for all of us today, um, what do you think about all that? Where in the world is this going? Is this really a big uh, kind of attempt at digitization and therefore control? There was a Supreme Court decision that came down it began in 2012. It was argued April 15th, 2013. It was decided June 13th. And this is the Supreme Court of the United States. Uh, it was the Association for Molecular Pathology versus Myriad Genetics Incorporated. And the, the case was whether or not uh, a, a pharmaceutical company can patent human DNA. And I'm, it's, it's a very long case. I'm just going to summarize in a couple of sentences here. This is really interesting. The Supreme Court ruled that a naturally, this is a direct quote, a naturally occurring DNA segment is a product of nature and not patent eligible merely because it has been isolated. However, when, uh, and I'm just going to interject here, when DNA is altered, the Supreme Court is using the term complementary DNA, or it's a, a lowercase c, DNA. So what they're saying is natural DNA, our bodies cannot be patented, our genes can't be patented. However, uh, complementary DNA is patent eligible because it is not naturally occurring. That is the Supreme Court ruling. Where that comes into this conversation is we're talking about where mRNA platform is a new platform and MIT Harvard studies at least showed in the laboratory that something called reverse transcription uh, did occur where the genome was actually changed in the presence of this is what's happening. What it says is that because our genome has been altered uh, at all, it is no longer a natural genome. It is now subject to patent but where this goes even deeper is the, the laws of the United States apply only to natural life. So it means the freedoms afforded to natural life do not have to be granted to artificial or to altered forms of life. So this comes into play as a legal framework for losing the freedoms uh, that allow us to preserve our humanity. So I think, so again, we're looking at the big picture. Earth is being uh, shifted in a way that's not good for us. And our own genome now uh, has the potential of losing the, the freedoms that are afforded to natural life through our, uh, through, through our, our own nation. Ultimately, I think all the things we're seeing, Ukraine, digital dollar, all of that, they're all symptoms of, of a deeper battle 
for our very humanness. We are the prize. I'm going to first, what I'm going to say is that, yes, there is some kind of terraforming going on on several levels, it seems. And one of these, of course, is the technological level. My sense is that the, the core of the terraform is on, is on a vibrational level. Hmm. And that's why we're seeing such a push towards hypermaterialism, because hypermaterialism is a kind of solidification of this reality set. And transhumanism is a, you know, it is a religion, more or less. It's a religion which will bring out an AI god at the end of it. But um, they're trying to uh, take the vibrational signature into a material pathway so the other evolutionary pathway is blocked. And the site of this evolutionary choice is coming through the human body. Because it's the human body which um, has been established as the vessel, one of the prime vessels on this planet and in this frequency reality set, which is all the time receiving cosmic impulses. So I think what we have to understand is that there's a lot going on in the unseen realm, which is trying to filter through and influence this realm. And the human vessel is the prime vessel there. Now, going back to Steiner, because John, you, you know, you, you, I think your question was heavily based around a Steiner perspective as well. Steiner said that this epoch we're moving into um, has a duty. And that duty is to recognize negative or what we may call evil energies or the evil impulse as an as a necessary impulse in world evolution so whatever we're going through these darker entities or energies are supposed to be are going to be seen as crucial as an impulse in evolution however the question is is which direction of evolution and steiner also said that um light is is very important here because uh, light has different, obviously different frequencies. It has an evolutionary frequency and natural light is provided by the sun and, and cosmic light, which the human body is being established to receive and work with. But the other type of light is artificial, which he, Steiner called sublight. Of course, artificial light is electricity. So Steiner said that any civilization which is dominated by forms that use electricity is going to be very dangerous because it's working with a lower form of vibration. And that then becomes a vessel. So if you have a, a human vessel, which is working with light and light higher vibration, we can bring in evolutionary impulses. If we're working through digital ecosystem, which works through electricity or the lower sublight, in fact, that vessel is of a certain frequency, which then is more uh, comfortable or more um, more facilitates a different type of entity. And, and just to kind of also join the dots, Edgar Casey, the sleeping prophet, said that later in this epoch, we're going to have a reincarnation or re-entry of many souls from Atlantis. And the Atlantic cycle, the cycle of Atlantis had a same kind of cyclic end whereby technology, in certain cases, brought its downfall by the misuse. Now, it could be that we're not always talking about uh, a certain kind of AI entity trying to come in. It could be a certain type of soul trying to come into the earth right now, which serves a certain agenda for those on this earth. But of course, if you certain bodies of vessels and human vessels may be trying to attract or be more amenable to those particular type of souls rather than the higher level of vibration of souls. So the terror, the question of terraforming to finish here is that it's a terraforming of frequency and the frequency that we are, we get the type of impulses according to that frequency. So to 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 deter from the darker elements, we need to be working for the frequency of the vibratory signature more aligned with the cosmic metaphysical transcendental impulse. I, I agree with Kingsley 100%. The frequency system of the planet is what is being changed. And that's resulting in different people and a different planet. That's the terraform, the geo terraforming that Greg is talking about. Another thing that I think is really critical, um, we cannot take a step up in terms of evolution in terms of higher consciousness, more expansive consciousness, 
without some sort of worthy enemy. And I've been a student of Don Juan and the Toltecs for 40 years. And so that uh, that concept of a worthy enemy, that I see that playing out right now. If we don't have something that really threatens, then we're going to sit on the couch and eat our popcorn. And we're not going to take the action internally or interpersonally or you know <clears throat> societally that we need to be taking and we need we need to be taking some action right now i just want to say something about kingsley's statement about uh, john lilly um and the the three questions how do you dominate large masses um, how do you weaponize the medical system and how do you inoculate people such that you split them from their system? We as a people are pretty ignorant, no offense to anybody, just generally looking at what do people understand about how they come to be, what maintains them, what's absolutely critical and what's excess or destructive. Um, that's not well understood. And we are at a point now, takeover or no takeover, you know, nasty boys or no nasty boys, we are at a point of having to choose where are we going, each one personally. How are we going to take that step? If you don't understand how you are made and how you function, then you're going to make the wrong choices. We are a, the soul is really a, a, a pattern, a matrix of frequencies that have collected matter. The nature of those frequencies imparts a particular kind of spirit or energy or consciousness, consciousness and energy are the same thing, into that matrix of frequencies. And then that arrangement of frequencies is unique for every single person. If you don't understand that the human is a system of frequencies, and then you allow somebody to get in there and mess with your frequencies, they change your signature, your frequency signature, then you're in trouble. Um, DNA, and I've, I've said this before, DNA is the most sought after commodity in the entire cosmos because it's the basis of being able to seed life where you want life, need life, where you want options for life, et cetera. So the DNA responds to frequency. It forms as a result of its response to frequency. It can be changed by inserting frequencies. And that DNA produces a particular uh, kind of consciousness. When the human... DNA begins to be messed with. Now you have a now you're really involving all kinds of people from across the cosmos who are involved here because they do not want to see the degradation of the original human EN hyphen K line of DNA. And that that line is what's being threatened right now. And so we do have people that are here uh, fighting. I, there's no other term to, to use. They are fighting the agenda, the takeover plan uh, for all they're worth. Um, they are very intent on saving this particular kind of DNA because we have a destiny. And that destiny is to hang on to our physical self, as, as I already mentioned. And yet take that to the next level into another, a higher state of matter where there is much more light, enough light and enough energy moving through the system that you begin like a light bulb to generate light. John, I'm going to go off script just a little bit here and just throw a question out, out to the group, because from this conversation, I think it's it's obvious that our uh, our planet is desirable in, in some form. And if if they, whoever we're going to define they to be, if they didn't need us, that there are a, a million ways that they could do away with us. So it's obvious that they need us uh, along with the planet. 
So as we're barreling down the road toward escalation uh, of war, nuclear war, um, and maybe ask Penny, do you think that there would be an intervention if we, if it was obvious somebody was going to push the button, would that be allowed to happen in our world and in, in your experience? Yes, they would. Now they, you know, they have said to several people, not whole masses of people, we may have to come and pick you up. That's a few people, key people here and there, but not huge, not huge numbers. The, the rule is non-intervention unless there has been uh, an attempt to manipulate people against their free will without their knowledge, people of a lesser developed consciousness um, by someone with higher developed consciousness, uh, then there cannot be any intervention. If that kind, if the people are not well developed and these guys are very well developed and they're trying to manipulate and and they're after two things, DNA and slaves. We haven't really talked about that much, but um, there can be intervention. However, they will not intervene if we have the means to save ourselves. And when it comes to nuclear war, their attitude is you have the means to save yourself. Don't push the button. Yeah. And so if we do, then all bets are off. <laughs> you know, they have also the means to clean up um, an entire planet full of radiation in a matter of a day or so because of the technology that they have, which is astounding. So it really is up to us to reel, reel this, this whole thing in. It is. It is. I mean, I'd like to interject here and, and go back um, to also go back to what Penny mentioned about the worthy adversary. I think that's a key term. And um, I, I myself, I, I'm not a, a believer in an in intervention is going to happen. Uh, that's my sense. It's like we, we have to work it out for ourselves because that's yeah. part of the evolutionary journey. Um, right. Now, I think like, you know, going, what Steiner said, that this is the epoch where we have to realize that these forces are part of the evolutionary impulse. So the, the word, the adversary could be there for both its ends and also to push us humanity. Well, thank you all. Uh, another delightful, uh, insightful, provocative uh, conversation. And I appreciate uh, you all being here and being a part of that. And then we appreciate all of you who are our viewers as well, of course. Uh, we can't do this without you. And we appreciate your coming and being with us all the time. If you'd like to be alerted to when a new episode of Quartet is uh, on the street, then uh, please subscribe and share this if, with your friends if you think that they'd like this. And, uh, you know, hit the like button so the algorithms uh, lighten up around uh, around what we're trying to do and uh, help promote uh, all of this. Uh, we'd like to also encourage you to go to, uh, if you're interested in these kinds of things, to go check out the Arlington Institute at arlingtoninstitute.org. We've got a bunch of kind of different programs. Like I say, we have transition talks where we bring speakers in to our little resort town, and then we live stream it all over the world. Greg will be with us on the 26th of August. It's going to be a wonderful all-day, all-Greg <laughs> event. Uh, capped off a dinner with a bunch of friends, 40, I think. <laughs> we've, we've oversold it, Greg. We can't sell any more food. That's anymore. what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, there's a, and there's far more that you can find out about at the Arlington Institute. So I hope you'll do that. So thank you all. I appreciate that. Nice, uh, nice conversation. Good conversation. And uh for those of you who are our viewers, come back and be with us, and we appreciate it. So thanks so much, and see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Yeah. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.